Welcome to Himalayas Asia Weekly Roundup. In this week's program, Bangladesh election denies people's right to vote. Authorities worsen and communal violence in Uttar Pradesh. Sri Lankan MP ends hunger strike against hospital closure. Suspicion surrounds free Papua commander's death. New Indian political parties meteoric rise and what it means for national elections. Stay with us for more on these issues. Welcome to Himalayas Asia Weekly Roundup. I am Anjuman Arabegam. Bangladesh has just held elections, but the country, it is full of hazards. Democracy, elections, independence of judiciary, fundamental rights, policing, and the rule of law are all in a state of permanent failure. They cripple the lives of ordinary people and prevent the proper functioning of institutions in the country. We start with a report from the so-called elections by the AHRC Bangladesh DEX. The January 5 fake general election is a great tragedy for democracy in Bangladesh. On election day, at least 24 people were killed, mostly by law enforcement agent gunfire. Several hundred people were injured in election-related violence between law enforcement agencies and opposition supporters. In around 500 voting centres, voting was postponed due to violence as the pro-opposition supporters and local people attacked the polling centres. Ballot papers and boxes were burnt and taken away by those who wanted to prevent the fake election. The ruling party and its allies have implemented their plan of denying the people's right to vote. Out of 300 seats in the National Parliament of Bangladesh, 153 seats were won uncontested by ruling alliance candidates. Thus, 52% of the voters lost their right to vote in the election in violation of Bangladesh's constitution, which holds direct and participatory voting by the people as the source of all power of the Republic. This was possible because of the Election Commission, or EC, which has acted as a pawn in the hands of the incumbent regime. The EC paved the way for the withdrawal of nomination papers of certain candidates using backdating so the ruling party's preferred candidates could win uncontested. The EC has done this in violation of the representation of the People's Order, allegedly following instructions of the ruling party, the Bangladesh Awami League. Officers of the civil administration and members of the police and paramilitary forces conducted election campaigns on behalf of the ruling party in the 147 constituencies where voting was held on January 5. The EC, which should have complete control over specific aspects of governance during the election period, shamelessly executed the ruling party's plan without regard for the laws of the land. As a result, the main ruling party, Bangladesh Awami League, was shown as winner in 232 seats. 13 seats were won by independent candidates, most of whom are rebel contestants of the ruling alliance who wanted to prove their influence in their jurisdiction and the rest has been won by allies of the ruling party itself. The ruling party cadres filled up the ballot boxes almost everywhere as the original voter turnout was below 20%. An incumbent minister's polling centre recorded the fastest vote casting as one vote casting took less than 10 seconds, which is impossible in a manual vote casting process. The rigging plan of the ruling party was exposed in an audio clip of a ruling party uncontested winner. Police possession of the Valen, or Samosana. Amaki Bolben, Ami Abu decide to Kurbo. The access to the Takbe, access to the Takbe, but in Matta Line Takbe, um, Bute Dabe Abu as a kitchen of Dabe, O Bari Gabena, access to the Saksan Line Takbe, Bute Bute Dubu, Abar as a kitchen and Nidan of Bujan of Sandy Takbe, O Abarasan of Bujan, Eva, O Abar Dabe, Eva as we, Loke, my Samba did the Asbe Takbe to Bad Bora. At least one candidate of a pro-government alliance boycotted the poll when he found that his own vote had already been cast before he arrived at the polling centre. At least 41 centres did not have a single voter during the whole day. In at least nine constituencies, the EC declared the government's preferred candidates as winners, although they were found defeated in the original result collected from the centres. This so-called election was only a matter of ritual for the ruling party to renew their license for looting the assets of the people and destroy all political opponents. 
the people of Bangladesh feel that their right to vote is completely denied. They have been deceived by the regime and their aspiration for a democratic society and nation is under serious threat and, a, and democracy itself is disappeared in the country. What will happen now? There are two ways uh, after this election. One is that according to the history of Bangladesh, the people will try their best to fight back to regain their rights as much as possible. On the other hand, an illegitimate government who is, doesn't have a moral legitimacy and a proper public representation, they will be uh, violating gross human rights uh, in a larger scale in the coming days. Uh, as assumed, it has been happening. Uh, so the situation of Bangladesh is going to be very threatening and risky. Months after over 60 people were killed and nearly 60,000 displaced following communal clashes in Uttar Pradesh, Muzaffarnagar district in India, the state government has dealt an additional blow to the survivor by bulldozing the relief camps where they had taken shelter. The state government made this callous move to save itself from the embarrassment of failing to protect the victims when people started dying due to the freezing conditions in the relief camps. Trouble started in the area in early September with sporadic clashes between Hindu and Muslim communities over the rumors of sexual harassment and resulted in several murders. These in turn were then used by the right-wing Hindu fanatics to fire up communal tensions. They had organized a huge caste-based gathering in Kawal on September 7, after which violence erupted. Community leaders are alleged to have spread false videos to incite anger against minority Muslim community. This led to the assaults on Muslim homes, forcing the inhabitants to flee to Muslim majority villages. Chilling reports of gang rape of women belonging to the minority community has surfaced, with at least six cases having been reported to the police. I'm standing in front of Malakpur camp, housing more than 700 families who are, who are affected in the recent riots in Mujaffarnagar, uh, Bagpat and Shamli districts of Western Uttar Pradesh. Though the camp houses mostly the people from uh, the worst right hit villages like Risal, Lakh, uh, Kutba, Kutbi and many such, but then in all, overall, 45 uh, villages, uh, uh, the camp has uh, uh, inhabitants from 45 villages. As you can see, this is one of the largest camps uh, uh, with more than 4,000 people uh, housing uh, uh, the refugees. You can also see, and it is very apparent, that means like the camp rubbishes all the claims made by state government that there aren't any more camps and the people have gone back to their villages. You can see how they are living in most of the situations in this uh, biting cold when Mujaffarnagar is witnessing uh, almost 0.3 and 0.4 temperature repeatedly. In Basi Kalam camp, visited by ASRC's Avinash Pandey, only two people have been arrested out of 110 named for killing eight members of the minority community. In a bizarre move criticized by the Supreme Court of India, the state government has offered compensation of 500,000 rupees per household to those affected on the condition that they never return to their villages. HSC staff has visited several camps, some of them already demolished by the state government and is appalled by the situation there. These are the grapes of the children that uh, rubbish all the claims made by the state, the UP state government, that there aren't many deaths from cold and hunger in the relief camps uh, in the aftermath of Mujaffarnagar riots. As you can see, I'm standing in front of grapes, uh, very recent grapes of children who died in Malakpur camp. The total number of deaths reported in the Malakpur camp are counted at 33 uh, by the uh, inhabitants of the camp. The HSC demands an immediate intervention to stop the situation from our selling. On December 25, a member of Sri Lankan parliament declared a hunger strike and chained himself to a wall at the Badrulia district hospital in Kalutara district so as to avoid being taken away against his will. Palitha Tebara Paroma, an opposition MP, was protesting to demand the reopening of the hospital, which had been arbitrarily closed down by the authorities. It has become a common practice in Sri Lanka to forcibly remove hunger strikers 
in order to suppress protest. Tiruvannapuramma states his hunger strike as other attempts to open the hospital have failed. The hospital has closed down on December 17 after villagers protested over the death of a local man who had brought to the hospital in a critical condition and who was not given any treatment. His son, who brought him to the hospital, struggled to get any attention and a doctor arrived only after 40 minutes. The doctor called the police and the police assaulted the patient's son. All this happened in front of the patient who was critically ill. In retaliation to the people's protest, the doctors and nurses went on a strike and the hospital was closed down. Large crowds gathered to support the MP's hunger strike and on December 27, the authorities promised to reopen the hospital. The Jayapura Regional Commander of the Free Papua Movement, Denny Kogoya, passed away on December 15 in Vanimur, Papua New Guinea. The cause of his death was reported to be river cirrhosis. His family submitted a request to the Vanimo Court House asking for permission for them to bring Denny's body back to Indonesia, but the court concluded that his death should be treated as homicide. On December 17, the court ordered an autopsy to take place. As the autopsy was about to be conducted at Vanimo General Hospital, four Indonesians intervened and prevented the autopsy from taking place. Two of the Indonesians have been identified as staff of the Indonesian consulate, whereas the identity of the two other remains unknown. Dennis' family believes that the other two are possibly from Indonesian intelligence agency, which was involved in the 2004 poisoning of Munir Said Talib, a prominent Indonesian human rights activist. The consulate staff failed to provide any clear reason to cancel the autopsy, but Dennis' family was told that it was done for your sake and ours. The intervention of the Indonesian authorities in the autopsy has raised suspicion of their involvement in Denny Kogoya's death. The election success of Abandmi Party to the State Assembly in New Delhi is a watershed event in India. This is the first time in which a newly formed political party was able to succeed substantially in India without having caste religious or regional identities and alliances. The election success of Amadbi Party, which means Ordinary People's Party, has emerged out of a growing movement in India against corruption. Earlier we talked to HRC's Bija Francis about the meteoric rise of this new party. The election success of the Amadbi Party uh, in New Delhi elections should be perhaps seen as not the race of a party or the, or the growth of a party. It is just the reaction of the Indian public when they had an opportunity to select a political grouping or a group of individuals who promised that, that they will deal with corruption which is embedded into Indian administration at the moment. So what you see today is or what, what India has witnessed today is the massive support, the pending anger of the Indian public against what is today known as politics or corruption in India. So the Amatmi Party has given a vent, is the realization of the pent up anger of the Indian people. So that is what defines the, the coming to power of a political party like the Amatmi Party. Now, what it implies for the upcoming election, I hope that this is a pointer, an indicator, a catalyst for political parties of whichever color that they belong to or whatever ideology that they profess, that it is time that the people of India would react if they don't shift gears and if they don't really take seriously that corruption in India need to be addressed. This is all for this week's Human Rights Asia Weekly Roundup. For more information on these issues, log on to www.humanrights.asia. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.